record arena as Kel Brook takes on Australian Michael Zarafa in a WBA super welterweight title eliminator. Big, big night for Kel Brook, Darren. It is. Because of what's on the horizon potentially next year. I mean, there's a pot of gold there, isn't there? There's a huge fight looming. Uh, he's fighting in front of his own fans, so he wants to put on a performance. And yeah, it's uh, it's cold in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, um, I'll give you my waistcoat yeah, when, when the next VT please. rolls. Um, John O'Carroll and Guillaume Fremois, of course, do battle for the IBF Super Featherweight title yeah. eliminator. Same kind of thing for him, really. Long journey, um, didn't expect to, to go professional no. six years ago, and now he finds himself on the cusp of, of world title action. His, his story's great. If you don't know much about Jono, it's, it's really interesting, mm. isn't it, like being in Australia, etc. But yeah, the huge fight for him because, you know, the, the fight after this potentially is Farmer. So yeah, huge fight. Um, one of the best rising to welterweight prospects in Josh Kelly um, moves up a big level in David Avanish and former WBA champion. Um, big test for Josh Kelly, really looking forward to seeing how he gets yeah, on tonight. I've well. got a feeling this is going to be exciting. I think it's gonna it's gonna go rounds and uh, he's gonna be tested uh, this evening. I've got no doubt. Mm. Um, Anthony Fowler against Jose Carlos Paz, the Mexican. Um, he's in against a, a guy just of a slightly different level. He's mixed it with the WBO champ Jamie Munguia early mm. this year. It'd be really nice to see how Fowler gets on because again he's a guy that's been kind of operating a little bit above his level of opposition in the last twelve months. Yeah, I think all all sort of roads lead to to Ted Cheeseman. I think mm. a big domestic dust up, but you've got to take care of business. He's in there with a tough opponent and. Uh, my, my biggest compliment for Andy Fowler is how he's done the weight. I do not know mm. how he's had breakfast. Breakfast in 153 it's, it's pounds. I'm making a big deal out of this, but I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah, shocked. Well, one man that made the weight very, very well uh, on Friday was Kel Brook, the special one. He weighed in 150 pounds for under the limit. We caught up with him earlier on this week. Sean Porter that day, he's won the WBC world title. I'd love Errol Spence, you know, and re wrong the, you know, put, put right what, what, what we're wrong. You know, in that fight, this Thurman back on the scene. You know, he's he's back fighting again. And Danny Garcia's. You know, you've got um, Crawford. So it's a very healthy division. And 154. You know, I can I can move between the weights. You know, Heard, Charlo brothers. You know, there's there's some big names there as well. So you know, everyone's going on about this calm fight. You know, if it, if it, if he if he's uh, don't fancy the job. Which he, you know, he's, he's showing signs that he's, he doesn't. There's, there's all them options there for me. Well, all the talking fight build-up was the weight for Kelbrook. Would it be an issue? But Darren, it was far from an issue, wasn't it, on Friday? No, but, uh, but I'm hoping it, it's not an issue because there was no need to lose that much. I know he wants to make a statement, uh, and I can understand why. You know, there's, he, he's trying his hardest, you know, and rightfully so, because everyone wants to wants to see the fight, he's trying his hardest to get the calm fight, so just dropping down to 150 shows, look, I can make Walter, if you want me to, I can make it, but Zaraf is a decent size, uh, you know, super welterweight. Mm. Fought up a middleweight, didn't he, sir? He's fought up at middleweight against Peter Quillen, putting a good performance, so he's used to fighting bigger guys. Kel's gone down to 150, three pounds over uh, the weight limit. Was there any need? But certainly a statement, that's for sure. It is. Well, one noticeable change uh, for Kel Brook will be the new man in his corner. Dominic Ingle has been with him uh, for the last few years, but John Fuchs will be there on Saturday night. We'll be there tonight. We both thought it was going to work, but we probably thought, oh, is it going to? The first day in the gym, it works straight away. And on December 8th, you're going to see the old Kel Brook of... Everything what he were doing well is, is counter punching and his ferocity and everything else. But you're going to see also a new Kel Brook, new tricks, new little bit of tweaks in his style, but also the freshness in him, the hunger. He's got his hunger back. I know as well as anybody, when you lose your hunger as a fighter, you're over. And he'll t probably tell you I, after he, he was maybe finding it a little bit hard after his losses, like he said in his interview earlier on. But he's back, he's happy. He's happy as Larry, whoever Larry is, right? And he's flying. He's, he's wanting to, he's in gym before me. He's dragging me out of bed at seven o'clock, six, half past six in the morning. And he just wants to go. So on December 8th, you're going to see a special performance. Well, he retired himself as a fighter in 2014, fought Martin Geffen for the English title. Um, and I think Kel Brook said he was the last guy that, that beat, beat Brook as an yeah. amateur, is that right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the dynamics of, of this this change uh, a simple really I, I think it's not about John trying to change uh, Kel too much he's just trying to get the best out of him he knows him no one you know knows him as well as him that I, I, after sharing the ring with each other and it's just about sort of man management now trying to get the best out of Kel uh, and try and keep him confident and upbeat and 
he seems to have done that because Kel's talking now, of, you know, another three, four years in the game. Mm. So, you know, John is obviously doing that. And it, it, Joe Watt, he's a really good bloke as well. Spending a bit of time with him around the hotel. He's a lovely bloke, very knowledgeable about the game. And uh, people think he's just sort of shown up. He's just turned up out of the blue. Mm. He's been doing this for years. He's been involved in the sport over 20 years. Mm. So it looks like it's going to be a good partnership. Yeah, I mean, as you say, he needed to feel refreshed for this sort of exactly. semi comeback as it was after the Golovkin and the Spence defeats. A little bit of time off, came back in March, sort of mm. tick over, an easy win for him. But now we're seeing, hopefully, we see the last chapter and it's Kelbrook Mark II. Yeah. And if that means a change in corner man, then so be it. And if it goes well tonight, then he knows that that could be the guy to see him out for the later stage of his career. It, it, it seems that way. It seems that way. They, 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 they get on well. There's definitely chemistry there, which you need uh, at this level. Um, but yeah, I just want to see Kel put on a good performance this evening and, and then move on to hopefully the fight we all want to see. Yeah. You know, I, it, at times it's like it's destined never to happen. We've seen it before, you know, loads of fights that never uh, got together in the past, but it's, it's the one we all want to see. It is. You know, he's made the statement, he's done everything he can now. It's just, I guess, down to, to Amir Khan, there's a talk of Terence Crawford, etc. Mm. You know, what's going to happen, but look, Kel's done his part now. Mm. Eddie's doing his part. Will it happen? You know. Well, speaking of grudge matches, it is nearly two years to the day since Dylan White and Derek Chisora did battle. And in two weeks' time, they're going to do it all over again. Shadows in the sky Footsteps in the night Behind me Targets in their sight Running out of light To save me Well, no prizes for guessing what sort of fight that's going to be. Very pleased to say one man who's challenging for the WBC flyweight title on the undercard. Charlie Edwards, congratulations on securing another shot. Um, you were 8-0 when you took your first shot um, against John Real Casimero. And obviously, it was early on in your career, but an opportunity that you knew was too good to turn down, win or lose, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was an opportunity where I was in like a win-win situation. Although I got beat, I've learnt valuable lessons from it. Mm. I wasn't expected to win at such an early stage in my career. And I went out there and actually showed a lot and I got a lot of um, fans from it. And I showed that I'm a real fighter who's going to take risks, who wants to get to the top. Because Darren, it wasn't, it wasn't, there wasn't levels between them really, no, was there? No, there, wasn't, what... there wasn't much, much in it at all. He was just, he's just tough, mature, wasn't mm. he? Lad, what, what are the lessons you've learnt? Um, Really, it um, opened my eyes to the actual sport of boxing. It, I was very naive at first, I would say. Um, I, I believed in myself that I was top notch, mm. but really, reality was I wasn't, and I had a lot of work to do. Um, like I said, I, I mixed it at that level, so I realised uh, what it was like to be at level. But as soon as I stepped out, as soon as I got beat, after I got over the defeat, which took a long while, I um, reassessed myself brushed myself down and done what I had to do and now I believe I'm 110% ready and you'll see that on December 22nd. When you were in there um, on the night, what were the things that you noticed that were the difference in maybe the level between someone's at national and, and world level, do you think? His timing was absolutely spot on, perfect. 
the punch power was disgusting, to say the really <laughs> From the first disgusting. right hand I took, I didn't really know where I was, and I kind of just boxed on autopilot, if I'm totally honest. Um, so when I watched it back, I looked back at it, the first time I watched it back, I was like, wow, did I even perform like that? And mm. I was I was proud of how I did perform and how I bit down. Um, I, he, he just had volumes of experience on me. He knew how to set traps, he knew how to draw me in, he knew how to control the pace. And boxing is all about experience. And um, it was very hard at the time to get over that. But as soon as I got over it, and now I've gone away for the last two and a half years, the experience is there. And I've mixed it in, in the ring with like the likes of Ryan Burnett as he unified the Bantamweight division. Mm. I was one of his main sparring partners. And he really, really toughened me up. So I owe Ryan Burnett a, a, a lot for this. And <laughs> December the 22nd, yeah. a lot of it, my success will come from sparring with him. It's a great, a great stay where they got down there at Adam Booth's gym, isn't it? And I know you're very close with, with those guys, Josh Kelly, Mick Conlon, Shannon Courtney down there as well. And as you say, it's, it's always that adage of success, breeds success, but you guys are, are all kind of flying. And I suppose operating in the company of someone that has achieved what you want to achieve just makes it that much more tangible, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. Um, it was a great year of my career down there uh, with... Um, Adam Booth, I learned a lot, he taught me a lot of things, but like I said, Ryan toughened me up so much. And <laughs> not only that, it was day in, day out, seeing him train, seeing him prepare, what it actually takes, the mentality you need to be a world mm -hmm. champion, and um, what, how to make weight properly, and all of the behind the scene things that people don't actually see. Or so many components, isn't so it? Many to you, you look at the training, you look at the fight, and you think, that's it. Mm. It's not so much goes down to the preparation. Yes. Honestly, in all fairness, the, the, the fight night is the time to sort of show off. It's show the hard work, yeah. or show the preparation that you put into it. Yeah. It's well, I guess, yeah. I guess when you look at that, Casimiro, though, at least you can take, you, you've got valuable experience, mm. lessons learned, but you can see there was nothing in it, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it, there's confidence to be taken from it. 100%. <clears throat> I believe I'm a different fighter now, and I know I'm a different fighter now. And um, if Rosales is looking at my Casemiro mm. defeat and thinking that's me now, he's in a bad place. You spoke about not making the weight properly. Of course, that was at flyweight. You've been operating at Superfly for the last couple of years. This one is back down at flyweight as well. How, how are you feeling physically? I'm in the best place physically, mentally and emotionally. I know how to do this game now. I'm, I've been in it for a long time. I've been pro four or five years now. So. I've lived it from mistakes to lessons learned. And um, yeah, I know how to do it now. I was sitting at, say, 3% of my, weight, my uh, fight weight three weeks, four weeks in advance. And that wasn't healthy. I was draining myself. I was sitting in saunas back then. Now I know how to do it with all the diet, um, how to drink a lot of water. I wouldn't drink water. Mm. I thought water was my energy back, yeah. uh, my enemy back then. And now I'm drinking six liters a day st still, even more probably. Wow. So I'm, I'm fully hydrated all the time. My energy's there. Everything's gone so perfect. I've been re doing all my recovery right. Um, I've been in that cryotherapy machine. And I've been there just before I come here, and it's just, it's all these little percentages are adding up, and on fight night, you'll be able to see that. Well, as you know, there isn't a lot in it sometimes between fighters at world level, and, and Nothing. every single half a percentage, quarter of a percentage you can get, you've got you've to do. And this is a, a guy that sounds like a renewed fighter that's right. ready for the test. There's confidence there. That's what I can see in it. Do you know what I mean? You, I, I feel you've, you've really learned from it. And it's true, top level sport is that, it's fractions. Mm. That could be the difference between winning and losing. Mm. You understand, in preparation, it's key getting it right one 100 percent this is the only time i can say a hand on heart in my career i'm in the best place ever wow With all my support from my sponsors are all coming together uh, my trainer grant smith has done a fantastic job on me made my training camp so easy all i've got to do is turn up to the session he's programmed and planned everything my sponsor um from gopak and him uh, organise the sparring partners who we've paid to come over. Who have you been sparring with? I've got um, Karim Gouifi, I think it is, from uh, France. He uh, was EBU bantamweight, uh, bantamweight champion. Mm. And he, uh, you've probably seen him, he knocked out Ryan Frag in three rounds. Yep. Yeah, yeah, When yeah. he was over here up in Liverpool. So um, he's a very class, and he's very similar to Rosales and he's boxed in a similar side and he's come, been coming to take my head off so and I've also been sparring with Tom Bell who's a super bantamweight who um, is like he's 5 foot 10 so we're overcompensating right, the right, reach yeah, yeah, and overcompensating no, the that. height and um, everything's going smoothly obviously my brother's been moving me around as well Sonny Edwards and I was a few weeks ago before Ryan Burnett's fight I was down there for his last spar so my training camp's gone perfect excellent oh, great
I was going to say there, you're an uncle, aren't you? I'm an uncle now, yeah. yeah. Congratulations, you're an uncle. mate, well yeah. How is, uh, how is your brother getting on? Yeah, my brother's doing really well. He's actually fighting next week, fighting Junior Granados for the WBC international yeah. title. So we're going to have two green belts for Christmas. Lovely. Amazing. That's Lovely. so good. He's got WBO uh, European at the moment, yes. isn't he? Progressing well. I always think of him as being a lot younger than you. He's only, what, three and a bit years? Is three, three and a bit years younger. He's uh, tw 22. I'm 25. Look about 16. But yeah. That's but he, looks, everyone he looks, looks about nine. So it's sort of, <laughs> yeah, he does. But I'll tell you what, he, he looked brilliant fight. last time, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> he was fantastic. I mean, that was punch. punch. Punch perfect, yeah. wasn't it, last time? 100%. He's, he's going up levels and levels, and uh, you'll see the better of him when you, he gets put in. And when he gets tested, he just raises the level again, and he makes uh, the fighter look even more ordinary. To be, to be fair, Handel Hart, he's a worse sparring partner. I hate sparring with him. He's so <laughs> awkward sparring and him? so horrible. Do you, do you probably go at it? You know yeah, we go, we, we go at it. We yeah. go at it, but we, we, it's all love. It's all love. We go at yeah. it, but... His movement is special, and that's coming from I would class myself as an elite fighter now. And things to come in the future for him is going to be massive. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Well, listen, Charlie. All, all we can say is the very, very best of luck in, in two weeks' time. You're going to be yeah, in London, best, fans screaming for you, and the we'll before. be shouting, won't we? Yeah. We'll be screaming. And listen, the one thing I think we, we say about it is, you know, when you lift that title on the 22nd. The, the loss that you experienced after your eighth pro fight all a part of will the all be worth it, right? It all a part of the journey. I've walked the walk before. I know what to expect. Walking out in front of a packed arena on pay-per-view, it's my time and I'm ready to take over. Former Repton boy as well. So. Of course, of course. He is. Repping the greens. So it's going to be green all over the gaff. Well, listen, we've, um, we've got your last knockout to close you out and before you go with Charlie, thank you very much for, thank you for joining for us. Me. Cheers. Cheers. Let's have a look at that knockout. Please. Get excited about Edwards wants to make fire with fire. It's really exciting, this yeah. one. Great fight, really good performance. Oh, oh big right hand. That's, that's surely it. it. He went down heavily. He's not going to make the count here. And Edwards will start celebrating. It is all finished. And it's finished dramatically in the third round. So I'm absolutely <laughs> yeah. savage. Looking forward to Charlie, aren't we? He, he's buzzing, isn't he? He, so is. he looks, he's ready. Yeah. If, if anyone's ready for a world title shot, it's him. Can't wait, cannot wait. One man that was there in Newcastle and will be there on the 22nd as well. He is everywhere, Tom Craze. He's on Twitter. He's with us. He's got a nine to five. I don't know where this man sleeps. Well, it's cold up here, isn't it? It is I'm really cold, yeah. This Keeping you awake. Um, yep. Good to see you, Tom. And you. Um, we missed you in Monte Carlo, mate, but it was um, a bit of a distance for you to come over, I think. Um, but lovely to have you back. Um, just a quick one. Yep. What are the sort of price are we looking at for Charlie Evers on the 22nd? So the odds for that went up a couple of weeks ago. Um, Charlie, as we were talking off air, actually, he's uh, 11 to eight underdog um, with William Hill. Uh, which means for Zales it's four to seven, so slightly better than a two to one. That's just outright. Um, favorite. That's the outright. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's all that's gone up so far, right, actually. Right. But mm. it's, um, I, look, I think it's a worthy favourite. Um, and but I think there is very much a way that Charlie can box his way to victory. I'm very much looking forward mm. to that fight. We we'll see if there's any movement on that um, in a couple of weeks' time. You'll be back with us um, at the O2 on Absolutely. the 22nd. So look forward to that. Um, let's talk about it tonight then, Tom. Yeah. Um, where do we start with uh, the odds for for Brook and Zarafa? Well, we start with the uh, with the outrights. Um, last time I checked, Brook was a 1 to 50 favourite, so 50 to wow. 1 on. Wow. Um, looking further around the industry, you're looking at 1 to 100. Um, <laughs> okay, that. And there wow. it is. Um, so let's not beat around the bush. This is a. It's not, not a fight the bookies think is competitive, let's we'll, face we'll, it. So looking at that, Zarafa, will, will people be lumping on that? Will, will, is it too risky? Will you look at him and think, you know, 12 to 1, I can make some money? Or. Is that, an, is that a no-go? And Are people going to touch that? Would you bother? I, I don't think Zaraf no. is going to see a lot of money tonight. I think the the way you, you're looking at it, if you've got a 150 favourite with a fighter as popular as Kel Brook, is mm. that you'll look for other ways mm. to back him. Uh, I don't think Zaraf is going to see a lot of money tonight no. at all, um, as much as the Aussies like a bet. But I, I think <laughs> <laughs> So what that means is obviously that we have to look elsewhere you, if yeah. we look at the next one. Yeah. Um, there it is. One to four, One Kel to Brook four, to win. One to four, Brook to win by KO, knockout. Yeah. So, if so you've got to put four quid on to win a pound? Yeah, what that means is if you're looking for a slightly chunkier return by not backing the outright, right. you're kind of bang out of luck if you, if you want to back the stoppage. Okay. Um, look, Kel Brook's had his critics, and, and perhaps rightly so, but one thing that's never been in doubt is that he can really, really punch. Brilliant. 26 knockouts from 37 wins. Um, but one to four implies that he's going to win 80% of his fights, which is actually slightly statistically lower than he does. Um, he's had 11 uh, decision wins. Yep. Uh, if we look at the next slide there. Uh, it's the yeah, it Brick decision, 11 to four. Yep. Um, 
Now, looking back through his record over the past or past few fights, it's been four years since Brooke had a decision win, which is obviously against Sean Porter mm. on the road. Um, before that, seven of those 11 were in four rounders and six rounders. So when Brooke wins, he tends to win by uh, stoppage, as we know. Um, and uh, this is a huge ask for Zarafa to last the 12 rounds, I think. He's tough. He's, he's going to come tough. and have a go. Um, but I was thinking about this fight last night, and it reminded me a little bit of um, what we saw last weekend, Jarrett Hurd and Jason Welburn. Mm, yes. Who, obviously, this is a final eliminator for Wel uh, for, Welburn, sorry, for Hurd's title. Of course. Now, what tends to happen is, obviously, if you're, if you're overmatched and you're game and you give it a go, like I think Zarafa will do tonight... Mm. You expose yourself. If you expose yourself, exactly, and it tends yeah. to accelerate the, uh, the stoppage win for the favourite. Should be a coach, Tom. Enough <laughs> 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 of my player at the moment. No end to this man's talent. Uh, so, if we look at the next one. What is that next one, Tom? Uh, it is... I was going to say oh, it's on nicely, too. Uh, Kale Brooks to win in rounds one to three. Mm. Um, so I don't know if you have got some money on that. Yeah, listen, yeah, Zarafa, yeah. Zarafa likes to come to have a shootout. That's yeah, a thing. little birdie yeah. uh, said the same thing. <laughs> um, so digging deeper into the same thing, look, if you're looking at the form line, Brooke doesn't tend to hang around when fighting fighters slightly at the, uh, below his level yeah. or perceived at lower his level. Obviously, yeah, with yeah. the um, Spencers and the Porters, it's a different mm. story. Yeah. But Rauchenko, Bizier out in two, Gavin out in six, uh, Senchenko out in four. So over his past four fights, he's got an average of three and a half rounds. Um, Tom lumping on his second Slightly title, higher, four point three in his last six. Okay. Um, now that's obviously slightly north of what you're looking for here if you're backing under three rounds. Mm. Um, but at 23% implied probability, yeah. that you've got plenty of, plenty of give yeah. there, I think. Um, if we just look at the next one. Brooks winning under four and a half rounds. What's, that, what's that mean? Four and a half. Four, Darren, I told you this last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I, st I still can't get it in the end. What's that? <laughs> so, so four, four minutes. One minute twenty nine. One, right. Okay. One minute twenty nine. So people will be watching, watching the clock. It's basically it, it's taken from football originally. It's what, right. what you call an Asian handicap. So it means that if you if you had uh, I was listening two, to you last two time. goals just, in the well, <laughs> I'm just I just can't um, get <laughs> this bet in luck. It, it's basically it's brought in to avoid. Uh, avoid arguments with the bookies here, right, right? Right, okay. um, but it does mean that you're kind of clock watching a little yeah. bit mm. um, there's an alternative if you if we moved on to here I think this is such a solid bet um, the last time I checked yeah. it was actually slightly shorter with William Hill it was 8 to 11 so right. there has been money coming in on it this week mm. um, it actually opened at 5 to 4 across the industry so people have been piling on this all week it's much safer isn't it really? uh, it's much safer I just think it's such a solid bet um, slight odds on but if it's the kind of price that you've got an appetite for I think there'll be some big money going on mm. this tonight, as there has been all week. Mm. Um, would have landed in all of Brooks' last four, five of his last six. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it just gives you a lot to, to kind of work with at that yeah. price, even at 8 to 11. Great stuff. Are we now uh, on to the undercard? On to the undercard, on? yeah. Um, look, it's, it's the same kind of story. The bookies actually don't think it's going to be very competitive, mm. which I think is a little mm. bit harsh on Avanesium. Uh, well, couldn't agree more, although we've got to, we've got to think he lost his uh, last fight by stoppage against the heavy-handed Kavaliskis yep. nonetheless, but, as you say... Look, he, as you know, he's mixed at a higher level. Very he's hard, beaten yeah. ex-world title challengers, Mabuza, mm. um, Fort Peterson, obviously fought a very faded Shane Mosley. Yep. If Josh, uh, Josh Kelly is what I think he is... He'll back that up tonight, but it's uh, it's an interesting price. Stoppage win for Josh Kelly tonight is huge, Darren. Yeah, I, I think it has to be early though for him for, for him to be able to do so. Mm. Vanessians walking around the hotel, shoulders back, full of confidence. Yeah, I'm I think telling you. If you you're know. talking about guys who's going to give it a go, Vanessians oh, wow. is exactly yeah. the type of. I, I think for me, if that one goes past four or five rounds, it's going to get interesting. I, I like it's a good it. fight. And I think of the of the underdogs tonight, that's the, the guy you're mm. looking for. Uh, at five to one, was that? Five to one, yeah, um, yeah with William Hill. Uh, next. next one, then. Johnny Carroll's win by knockout. Johnny Carroll's win by knockout. Yeah. This might be a bit of um, a left field pick for some, actually. I think looking at Carroll's record, he's got, uh, I think it's three knockouts yeah. and 16 wins. Yeah. Um, so you think, hang on, why, why look at this? He's won his last two by knockout. Um, I was actually watching his last fight again last night with Declan Garrity. Mm. He was absolutely relentless in yeah, that he fight. Stop, does he? Rips to the body. Mm. He's so strong. I just wonder at 35 years old if Frenois 
is he going to stand up to it? Is, is Carroll you know, a little bit fresher now? He looks in good condition for Emwa, yeah. but as you say, the pace and what's at stake for John O'Carroll could just see him set a work rate similar to that Garrity fight, and if so, it's, it's going to be late. hard to last a distance yeah. against I think he's punching a bit more spitefully as well. Now, looking he at, you know, He's only 26 years old, mm. he's coming into his style a bit, uh, and he's so confident yeah, with it as he well. He is, he is. Uh, we've got a treble to look at Next as well, one. Tom. Yeah, so as we did um, back in Manchester, mm. I thought I'd throw a treble in, just for the guys who don't want to put a load on, but if you want to put a fiver, just to kind of keep the, the show interesting. That's my That's one for you. That's your max bet, is it? I reckon that's me, then. I'll put a quid on that. <laughs> like you did in Monte Carlo, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so taking all the favourites to win by stoppage, again, obviously, I think you're looking at... that. There's question marks there about Kelly, about, um, yeah. about Carol. I think they might be kind of headed a bit longer. Um, but four to one, it's going to give you a night of, of kind of interest at the very least yeah. um, for a slightly bigger return. Good stuff. And then are we doing the charity bet at Haven's Hill Children's Hospice this week? We've got another charity bet, yeah, just the next one. Let's have a look at that one. Um, and it's the same as flag good, four. Right. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Go. That's good. Um, again, it's, it's coming. It's eight to 11. Um, so you're going with the money, basically. It's yeah, been a bit of a yeah. gamble on it this week. Mm. Um, but look, the numbers don't lie. Uh, and I just think it's... It's such a solid bet. It's where my money is tonight, uh, and I think any kind of permutation of getting on Brook short rounds tonight is is going to give yeah. you a decent go. Good man. Um, very controversial uh, draw in Tyson Fury and uh, Deontay Wilder last weekend. A lot of speculation, huge amount of conversation on social media. Out of interest, what was the price on the draw? Well, if you didn't even shop around last weekend, if you if you kind of went for the worst price you saw, you're looking at 25 to one. Really? Um, I saw up to about 34 to one, 33 to one. Um, there was a great clip actually. Ted, See that Ted Cheeseman? Ted Cheeseman mate. on Instagram. 500 quid. 500 quid at 25 to one, 13 grand. No oh, way, the yeah. big cheese. Yeah. Merry There's Christmas a video. Said. Get on there. It's a funny video. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's <laughs> brilliant. It was his mate. Wow. It wasn't him. Yeah. Oh, no, it was his mate. Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone's fantastic. having a party when you win that much money. Yeah. Um, fantastic, Tom. Listen, as always, thank you so much. Awesome, we look forward Tom. to seeing you, thank you guys. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Well, speaking of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, the WBC last night sanctioned an immediate rematch between the two of them. One man that was in LA all last week and is joining us in just a few moments' time. He's the founder of iFilm TV. Why are you only so nervous around me? I'm not nervous around you. Someone have sure? my camera, I'll show you I'm not nervous. There you go. You're gone. <laughs> What's this? Let's see a face off while you're out here. You want a Jamaica versus Sri Lanka face off? Let's see who cracks first. You ready? <laughs> See, no, you cracked. <laughs> I didn't crack. You cracked. You Why cracked. are you flinching? No, just, just Why are you flinching? Very pleased to say they're having another face off already, these two here. A lot of weight between you boys. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, Coos, good to have you on the show, mate. Thank you for coming on. Um, busiest man in boxing, I think. Think. I'm oh, pretty sure you are. <laughs> are you sponsored by Beats as well? Is no, this, uh, I don't know. this is sort of a George <laughs> Rose thing happening. Yeah. Um, Do you know what? It makes a change, doesn't it? Him being interviewed. Yeah, right? oh, I'm a bit nervous. I know, it's Not a bit around <laughs> you, but around <laughs> yeah. Chris Lloyd. Um, Good to see you, mate. What did you think of the... F oh, yeah, it's not, it's not very normal for you to be answering questions. So I guess you, you used to answer. I try and swerve it. I know he you does. Do. I've, tried to, today, I've, tried friend, the I've tried to turn today. the camera a few times and he, he hasn't let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, what were your thoughts on the fight on Saturday? Um, I was very optimistic before the fight just because I'm a bit of a Fury fan, mm. as I am with all our fighters here. But I was very optimistic. Um, as the fight was going on, Fury for me was ahead all the way. I mean, personally, I think I gave Wilder in the first seven rounds, maybe two rounds. Mm. Um, Including the, the knockdown round. Yeah, right? of course. But then what transpired in the final round was just... Crazy, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, literally. Um, I suppose everyone watching it just assumed while um, Fury is... Laid out cold. Mm. Yeah. And then. See the Undertaker. Just bomb. <laughs> yeah, video I know. Comes, yeah. What, what was the feeling in the ringside, though, afterwards? It was a bit. Was it a feeling that he won it, or. I, think the, won, or? I think the feeling within the arena. I'm talking from kind of, say, our point of view, but of course, from the, yeah, like yeah. The, the British point of view. It felt like he had won, but then when they kind of announced it as how they did. Yeah. You fear that they're either going to. Give it to Wilder, you know, in Tyson Fury's perspective, fear that way, mm. or it, w it would be a draw. And to be fair to Tyson Fury, he 
held it together very well. I mean, he spoke about it this in the press conference afterwards that he purposely didn't kick off about it because yeah. he knew that there was a potential situation that could have been unwarranted. And if he kicked off about it and made a big thing about <coughs> it, then I suppose the crowd who were in Fury's favour would have reacted in that way as well. Mm. So the fact that he was very calm about the situation and kind of said, it is what it is, it's disappointed, but it is what it is, basically, mm. that, that kind of calmed what it down. What about um, off camera, though? What was he like? Off camera, I think... In the changing room and Yeah, I that. think, look, there's loads of footage. I think kind of, you know, they captured every moment kind of from him leaving the ring and him in the dressing room. His, his attitude was kind of the same. You know, he's yeah. disappointed, felt like he won the fight, but he didn't kind of make any excuses or mm. he didn't go on about it as such, you know, mm. he's, he's made his point and, but he could have, he could have kicked off more about it. He's come out of this looking like a king, hasn't, hasn't he? he? Yeah, like, he really just, has. He, I mean, he was a star anyway, but now people, if there was a percentage of people that didn't really like him, they all buzzing off of him now. They love Tyson Fury. So he's got his rematch now. Mm. Everything really, it works out okay for him, I it guess. It does. Let's, let's talk about the rematch, because it's been sanctioned by the WBC and not ordered, and there was a little bit of back and forth as to, to what that really means. Ultimately, what it means is it's not definitely going to happen. If Wilder decides to go and fight Brazil, he wouldn't necessarily be, be stripped of the belt. But all it means is, ultimately, that the only reason that rematch doesn't happen is if one of them doesn't want it to happen, right? Yeah, I mean, now we'll see. I mean, Wilder said that on numerous times after the fight that that's the fight. Fury's obviously said it, so we'll wait and see. There's just, there's so much going on and there's that, obviously that April the 13th date that looms kind of yeah, not too yeah. far in the distance and, and that'll be on both their minds, especially Tyson Fury now as well, mm. who people weren't really talking about him as being that opponent for Joshua on the 13th, but now... You still think this could happen? Either one of those could be the opponent? Of course, of course. Mad, eh? That's crazy. It could be. I mean, you'd have to say there's probably three serious one outsider that mm. could be in the running mm. for April the 13th, and that's Wilder Fury, Dylan White. Mm. Outsider. So, do you know what? I'm saying Dylan White like he's, yeah, he's already been. Oh, Derek, right? well, right? Derek yeah. if you're watching this live on... <laughs> yeah, you're in for a pace, uh, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> backhander from Derek. Rather um, you than but, me. No, but... Dylan White's always been the mention, uh, the opponent's been mentioned for that 13th day. Mm -hmm. If Chisora is to win, it kind of does, again, throw another spanner in the works mm -hmm. there as well. And, you know, judging by how many people thought that Chisora won the first fight, we don't know what's going to happen in this mm -hmm. fight. So, mm -hmm. given, given how stagnant the heavyweight division was in the Klitschko era, the number of variables and uncertainties and unknown things that are going to be hopefully transpiring in 2019 is, is Totally unprecedented, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, and Joe, you know what ultimately it's great to be talking about the heavyweight division again because mm. it was years where Klitschko dominated and it become a bit of a bore. Now there's, you know, there's, there's top fighters. I mean, the top ten's decent. Mm. Do you know, the top ten's decent, and hopefully they all get in there and fight each other. Mm. And, uh, and no one talks about the middleweight division anymore since you left. Since, it, I, retired. <laughs> since I retired, since I mean, it's, no it's one, been no dead. One, Darren yeah. talks about it. Though. Generally been dead. <laughs> so right, when I come back against Martinez, we're. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know if he's mentioned it much in the last two weeks. Where um, did that even come from? I don't even know. Even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. even his camera. Yeah. Well, listen, you and your camera have, have made some big news this week because it was 500 million views as a landmark for iPhone TV. Congratulations on that. Thank well done, you. Mate. Yeah, I've fine. got to be one of the first, surely. I was one of the first interviews I've got. You been. were, yeah. Are you trying to take credit? Because I mean, I'm taking credit. It was my yeah. interview this week that I think tipped them over. The, no, you the got half you got the big five hundred. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Obviously, it was. I wasn't there yesterday, and I just I was looking kind of to see what videos have been uploaded from my team, and I saw 25 minutes of Chris Lloyd. Okay. <laughs> Nobody I needs that. I haven't watched it yet, but I will watch it. I'm Thanks, quite mate. curious to know. What's interesting it's for 25 minutes? Yeah, not a lot. I shook his hand. Don't know if um, I've done 25 minutes with you ever. Yeah. Never, never. We've had some funny ones, though, haven't we? What about that one in uh, Atlantic City Atlantic where we've done the uh, metal detectors? Yeah. <laughs> Just, it's funny on the beach. Yeah, too, yeah, yeah. If you Google Darren Barker Atlantic City with... Uh, Ryan Taylor, Crash Bang. Crash Bang, Ryan Taylor, there that video go. will come up. There you go. We nearly, we nearly come unstuck against a metal detector <laughs> bloke. He, was, he wasn't happy. Um, but the most viewed video you've ever had on your channel was... Dave Allen. Was it really? Uh, he's weighing on the undercard of one of Joshua's fights against Dave Howe, a four or six rounder. 11 million. <laughs> 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 what was he? That is him. He yeah, has that a white wire himself. That is him. <laughs> he never has a day off. 
just thought he'd come and help out with security this weekend. But it's yeah, got he's the not hard fighting, hand. got pulled off the bill to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many views did this one have there? 11 million. 11 wow. million. I can't even. Down the, the sock down the pants. Yes, I can't explain to you how difficult it is to even look at those numbers. Basically, you would have to have. <laughs> You'd have to have Fury, Wilder and Joshua in a street fight and I'd have to be the only person that to filmed it bit. to even think about that. <laughs> so, 11 million, yeah. And he's got one of the, like, the top, another clip. He's done it again in his way in with uh, Lenroy Thomas and had another like five or six million views on that. Wow. It's mad. Never known anyone just to be such a cult hero as, as Dave Allen. It's great. Well, we're going to go on the ice street, aren't we? And we're going to we're going to see this. how many people in Sheffield know Dave Allen. More than, more than people in the US knew Deontay Wilder. Is, that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. Um, for, uh, finally, um, Khan and Brooke, a lot of talk about um, the potential Terence Crawford fight getting in the way of that next year. Have you, have you spoken to either guys about that? And if so, what have you kind of garnered as how, well, how, how bona fide is that offer? I don't know. Look, the news about this uh, Terence Crawford fight has only sort of surfaced in the last few mm. days, so we know it's true. Whether Amir will kind of decide to go that way ahead of taking a Kell Brook fight. We don't know. I hope he doesn't, to be honest. As much as I'll, yeah. I'd like to see that fight, I suppose, mm. between Khan and Crawford, do I want to see it ahead of Khan and Brook? Absolutely no. no. I don't want to see Amir can't fight anyone or Kell Brook fight anyone apart from each other next. Mm. So, you know. hold on, he's, was he offered $5 million? Apparently to, to fight Terence Crawford. Sure, yeah, yeah. Sure, Khan, Brook he generates agreed? more than that. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. Um, well, listen. Whatever happens, we appreciate you coming on. Um, nice thanks for your time. Enjoy no tonight. Problem. And we're going to get you on for sure before too long and ask you a load more questions as well. Cheers. Thank you very much, Coogan. No as well. problem. Um, this is uh, Coogan signing out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, this is not Coogan Cassis for iPhone TV. This is Coogan Cassis on before the bell. Um, Kelbrook and Amir Khan hopefully will do battle next year, but if they don't, uh, the one man in the way is Terence Crawford. We caught up with Kelbrook at the press conference earlier on this week. You know, I could, I could weigh in at 147 tomorrow if I wanted. You know, I've got that buzz. I've got, uh, I've got that buzz again. I'm, I've got many years left. I've got. I want to fight the top boys. Uh, Sean Porter's got WBC world title. He's there if he wants to rematch there. Errol Spence, I would love to bring him back here in the summer and uh, and get the win because I'm I'm an animal. Uh, you know, I feel reborn. Like I said, I'm buzzing. And Amir Khan is a con man. They should call him Amir Khan because he's a con man. He's He's, had, he's mugged you off, Eddie. He's, had, I, he's mugged you off. You know, I think... Not yet. You know, he, this is his last fight, big fight. You know, under, under matchroom, I thought that this fight were nailed on. You know, he shook me and looked me dead in the eyes at Tony Bell's last fight, looked me dead in the eyes, and he said, we will fight next. What, what, what can I do? I've bent over about with a, I've, I've said that I'll come to 147. We've not even we've not even talked about rehydration or anything like that because it's it's never got to that you know first of all we need him to come to the table and say yes it's on because I'm doing everything I can for the fans you know he's, he's turned his back on the fans he keeps saying that I have I think everybody knows that it's him what's running off. Well, so, uh, <laughs> if, you, if if you want my opinion, there's only one fight for Amir Khan, and that's what I've told him, and that's to fight you, and not fight anybody else. But that's another story because you have an important fight on Saturday night, and you have a guy that's going to try and end all your career plans on Saturday night in Michael Zarefa, and I know he's going to be doing everything he can. Certainly a renewed Kelbrook at the press conference earlier this week. Looked great on the scales yesterday. Very pleased to say uh, joining us is the man that's going to be calling the undercard. You'll know the voice very, very well. You've worked with him as well, Andy Clark. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here, chaps. Really nice to have you. We've been trying to get you on since, since September. Yeah, we have, hasn't we? quite yeah. worked out, I don't think. Um, it's a funny old thing, commentary, when you think about it. You watch a live sport and you're just watching it for the action. But you have now got this intrinsic element where you have somebody taking you through the action. It's amazing how our brains just store so much information because Andy's boxing knowledge um, let is me tell second you, to none, unbelievable. honestly. Andy's, <laughs> Andy's my go-to encyclopedia. When <laughs> yeah. I don't know something, Andy picks up the phone and all, I think he thinks, what does he want now? <laughs> but, um, Andy, um, j just talk us through any fights that have caught your eye, because you'll be calling the undercard right up until the main event. Um, what are you most looking forward to calling tonight? I think probably John O'Carroll against Guillaume Fren Guillaume Frenois, because there's most at stake in that one. Whoever wins will box mm. Tevin Farmer for the IBF Super Featherweight title, assuming that Farmer beats Francisco Fonseca next week, which it'll be pretty amazing if he doesn't. Mm. So, so that one, I think, because we all remember Carroll in Prize Fighter, um, where for most of us he came from nowhere because he'd been in Australia. Uh, not really taking boxing very seriously, came back for his sister's wedding, 
got asked if he would fight Declan Geraghty, did in the build up to that, got Great asked about story. Prize Amazing, Fighter, yeah. took it, won it. Um, things have been a little bit slow for him at times, but he can really fight mm -hmm. and he really wants that fight against Farmer. I don't think he's overlooking Frenois, but there's not much to watch of him, just the one defeat, but he hasn't really boxed many. Mm. contenders you would say so I do expect him to get the win I, I honestly think Carroll's going to be a star N not par uh, partly down to how good he is you know he's a good fighter but I just think he's got this character mm. about him he just reminds me a little bit of Conor McGregor yeah, yeah, I just think he's going to yeah, be a star yeah I can see that I, I, I could definitely see that I, I sat down with him on Thursday and I probably asked him about three questions and we were there for about 10-15 minutes yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's not like he just rambles either it's, it's interesting stuff yeah. you know mm. his life story is interesting and uh you know, he's got that. He's got. At some point, someone's going to tell him to get that beard off for a fight. I'd imagine. Well, I was going to. We, we, we said that, didn't we? Yeah, because it's almost. Where, where, how do you find that chin? Where is it? Well, I'm sure when I when I was fighting, I had literally this, mm. and I was asked to shave it. Wow. So I don't know what what's going on. I'm there. absolutely sure that for that world title fight, Lou DiBella will tell John O'Carroll that Can he's got to lose that, that beard. Yeah. Trying to land an uppercut. You've got, yeah, he's got a cushion. Um, listen, we're going to have a look at the, the running order for tonight. It all starts at uh, 7 o'clock on Sky Sports Action. You'll hear Andy's voice uh, talking us through. It all starts with Kid Galahad uh, at 7 o'clock. Kind of train your eyes up to the midway point of your screen uh, against Brian Moreno. Then Anthony Fowler against Jose Carlos Paz. Late edition um, Paz, Anthony. But the Mexicans are never out of the gym. Bit of criticism this week that oh, he's only had three or four days notice. But Mexicans fight regularly mm. and they don't take time off like other fighters in, in sort of you know, English boxing. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to match Fowler. It's, it's hard to match any of the, the Olympians, Buatzi, um, all, all the rest of them, really. And he's got to the point now, Fowler, where he needs, he needs someone who's going to come who expects to win, not just someone who's going to come and have a crack, someone who expects to win. I was talking to Dave Colwell the other day, and he basically just said that Fowler can't fight Cheeseman particularly or, or Fitzgerald, ideally, without having a fight first where mm. he's taken into some deep water. Agreed. Because otherwise... Because Cheeseman's had that a couple yeah, of times, two or three prepared. times, and he'll mm. be prepared for it. Mm. And um, you know, Paz fought Jaime Munguia back in in February, mm. um, and he got stopped in three. I watched it this morning, and he was out of his depth, he but he but he gave it he gave it his all. Uh, but Munguia is now world champion. Mm. Now Cheeseman, interestingly, when well, I saw him in a matchroom gym a couple of months ago, and he said, oh, "I was in holiday in Mexico in February, um, and I went to watch a fight. And it was Munguia. Uh, he did say who it was against, and he said, and I texted Tony Sim straight away saying, "I fancy Munguia. That'd be a good fight for me." Uh, then Munguia beat Saddam Ali. Mm. But his opponent that day, Munguia, was was the guy fight Fowler's fighting tonight. Mm. Um, and Cheeseman was tweeting yesterday. Um, Fowler's got to stop him early or, you know, we'll know what he's all about. <laughs> now, I think that's a bit harsh because Mugui is a, a, a world champion now. But, you know, that's the kind of standard that he's being held to. I mean, I would say, having watched Paz, that were he British, he would be fringe British level. Right. Um, what do you reckon? You've probably watched that fight, I'd have thought. Yeah, would I have. You say that? It, was, it was the left hook to the body that put yeah. him away, and, and yeah. that's really one of Fowler's best punches. Yeah. So if he can if he can stop him within the first six or seven, I think that's quite a, yeah, a solid so. statement yeah. for him. Yeah. Um, let's just move on uh, a little bit further up that list. Josh Kelly and David Avanesian is, is a big test for him. Um, How do you see that one going? Well... I mean, Avanesi is definitely going to come to win, and, and he definitely will think that he can win. Um, they've always been an ambitious team, you know, Neil Marsh and, and, and Carl Greaves, and his credentials are very good. He beat Shane Mosley, a faded Shane Mosley, but a faded Shane Mosley is still very still, good. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, good performance against Lamont Peterson. What, what I worry about slightly is that in his last fight, he got stopped on his feet, but he got stopped by um, Egedigis Kavialauskas, mm. who's a very heavy handed climbers fighter, heavy handed, on the rise. And that just makes me wonder whether he's just lost his edge a little bit. And if he has, then, then he could have a problem with Kelly. But mm. if he can take Kelly deep into the yeah, fight, that's what I think. Then, then we'll find something out he's about got, Josh. He's got to get it past six rounds, I think. He has then, to, yeah. yeah. He absolutely has to. Um, just before we wrap the show up, Andy, a brief word on uh, Canelo and, and Fielding next week. Uh, Madison Square Garden, biggest opportunity of, of Rocky Fielding's life. How... What would you rate of his chances? Because it's the toughest test he could have possibly been given, right? Yeah, it is. It is. And how does he win? Honestly, I don't know. No. Would it, do you think it'd be the biggest upset 
in boxing. Yeah, it would be the biggest upset I've ever seen. He's crazy, and he's the world champion. Yeah, yeah it'd be the yeah. biggest upset I've, I've ever seen. But, you know, he, he had to take the fight, obviously, because it's a huge fight, and it's for a lot of money, and, and there was no other option for him mm. out there that was going to make him even a tenth of the money that he's making fighting Canelo. Yeah. Mm. I said the other day that I don't think Amir Khan should fight Terence Crawford because I don't think he could beat him. No. Um, and I got loads of abuse from, from Amir Khan supporters, and that's fine, but my argument was that he shouldn't fight Crawford because he can fight Brooke. Whereas, and they said to me, one said to me, oh, but what about Rocky Fielding? You said it was great for Rocky Fielding taking mm. the fight. And they said, but Rocky Fielding hasn't got another option. Rocky yeah. Fielding's either going to get paid whatever he's going to get paid to fight Canelo or nothing like it to defend against someone yeah. else. So how can you not take it? Agreed. Well, Andy, listen, what a great insight and good luck at the commentary desk tonight. Thank you very much for coming Cheers, on the show. No problem. Well, there we have it. Uh, great insight from Andy Clark there. Thanks to all of our guests, Coogan Cassius, myself and Darren as well. We'll see you back here on the 22nd of December for White and Chisora, but we are now just five hours away from Kelbrook and Michael Zarafa. You've been watching Before the Bell. Thanks for your company and we'll see you a bit later on.